Welcome MS Translators. It is my pleasure uh, to be here today to present another one of our series of videos on our MS Virtual 2020 coverage. Uh, and it's my great privilege to be joined by Shailesh Shahi from the University of Iowa, uh, who's agreed to do uh, an interview with us today. So thank you for joining us, Shailesh. Uh, so I uh, connected with Shailesh during the conference uh, when I saw he was doing a poster on some very interesting research, which actually we've covered part of before on, on MS Translate, and I'm sure we'll, we'll discuss that as we're going through. Uh, but his work is on the, the gut microbiome, and we know this is a, an area of huge interest for our community, so I'm very excited about the fact uh, that we can sit down and, and talk with Shailesh today about his work. So thanks again for joining us, Shailesh. Can we start maybe by you just giving a bit of an introduction to yourself? Um, and also just a, a bit of a general overview of your research before we get into some specifics about your project. Sure, and first of all, uh, I'm pleased to be here and thank you very much, Brett, for your time and interest in our research. It's really a great opportunity to interact with the MS community. So my name is Saleh Sahi and I'm postdoctoral research uh, scholar and now I'm research scientist at the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine. So I completed my PhD and master degree in India. And then while I was doing my PhD, I come across this MS research thing. So I found that I, uh, the MS uh, cases in developing country like India and all other developing country are, uh, are increasing. So we, we, we were worried and the peoples and healthcare provider are not very aware that what is MS and what is the actual treatment for the MS. So we did the literature and I found that uh, the MS, there is no cure for MS and all the MS uh, people get the treatment is disease modifying treatment. So I decided to pursue my further career in MS research. And uh, after completing my graduate study, I joined Mangalam's lab in 2015. And from then to now, we have very interesting finding that I'll be happy to share and discuss today. Okay, well, I mean, it sounds like a very interesting journey that's, that's already taken you to, to the University of Iowa to, to work on multiple sclerosis research. So can you tell us a little bit about the specific project that you're working on at the moment? Well, the specifically we are uh, isolating and characterizing human gut commensal bacteria that possesses immunomodulatory role. So like we are, uh, at, um, first we are culturing, then identifying, and then we are testing it in the animal model of the multiple sclerosis and looking for their immunosuppressive or disease suppressing role and furthermore we are uh, also um, working on like how this suppress the disease what is the mechanism so if you will be aware about our published work so our, our observation suggests that a human gut derived commensal bacteria has a therapeutic potential for the ms therapy and uh, furthermore, we are also doing a comp comparative analysis of our characterized bacteria with the commonly used disease modifying drug that how bacteria is suppressing and how the drug like copaxone interferon beta is suppressing disease in preclinical model. Yeah, and it's really interesting work. And as you say, we've, we've mentioned one of those studies before that you mentioned, and we'll post the link to that under this video as people are watching so that they can access and, and read, uh, read about that. So what was sort of the background to, to this study? What was previously known in this area? Yeah, so uh, as we all are aware about a number of recent MS microbiome study suggests that trillion of bacteria residing in our gut and which might play an important role in maintaining the healthy state of the host. So in general, bacteria help in maintaining healthy state by various functions, including blood brain barrier, uh, uh, integrity maintenance, 
food metabolism, energy homeostasis, and inhibit the colonization of pathogenic bacteria to the gut. So any alteration in the gut bacteria and its metabolic network can perturb the normal homeostasis and lead to the intestinal and systemic disorders such as multiple sclerosis. So Mangalam's labs and other labs have shown previously that the MS patients are more prone to gut dysbiosis than the healthy control. And indicating that gut microbiota is a potential environmental factor that contribute to etiopathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. And furthermore, various studies have reported the depletion of certain gut microbiota in MS patients and enrichment of certain microbiota in the MS patients. And one among the various publication was the Privitella genus. Privitella was consistently depleted or very lower in abundance in the MS patients. So we thought that maybe it have some role in the disease pathogenesis. So we characterize various strain of uh, Privitella and we come into a conclusion that a particular strain that is Privitella hysticola uh, play role in disease suppression and we further extend our study based on this background. Okay, very interesting. So just, or just to, to pick up on one of the things you said, when you talk about dysbiosis, what that, what that term is really meaning is that there's a, a change from sort of a normal state to, a, to an altered state. Is that what we mean by, yes. by dysbiosis? Yeah, dysbiosis means change in the gut microbiota okay. to the normal state. Okay, fantastic. So I guess one of the questions, and I know that this came up when we had our, our initial chat before we did the interview, um, that I guess is a really um, important question to think about in this area, um, is do you have a feeling for whether or not these, these bugs um, are actually influencing the immune system and disease and the disease or whether I guess the disease is what's influencing the bugs? That's a very important question and we don't know for sure. Yeah. But as per my understanding, dysbiosis occur gradually over a period due to changes in lifestyle, food habit, medication, over antibiotic use, or ge geographical variations. Mm -hmm. So alteration in gut bacteria and associated metabolite might lead to a sustained pro-inflammatory environment that combined with genetic factor and other environmental factor can predispose to MS. So recent study published uh, by the Cali University of California and other study that published from Max Planck Institute of Neurology, Germany. Both studies have showed that the fecal microbiota, like fecal microbiota transplant from MS to germ-free mice increase the disease severity in comparison to the fecal mi microbiota of the healthy control. So it's sort of showing some role disease ex exacerbating role of the bacteria that present in MS patient gut in comparison to the bacteria that is normal in a healthy human. So one thing, another thing that, as I said that there is no clear answer of this question and it is kind of a chicken and egg question, but we are also trying to answer this question and Mang Mangalam's lab is recruiting the patients and collecting the sample at various time point so that we can know that at which stage of the disease, like when disease is in remission phase, when disease is in active phase, what, what was the microbiota status at that time? Yeah. And this, this will answer that the bacteria is exacerbating or the gut bacteria that is the remitting, remitting the disease. So, or, or vice versa, we can, well, so, it's, it's really interesting work uh, and, and really important question. Um, and to be able to actually try and figure out whether or not it is the chicken or the egg, um, you know, I, I think is, is really excellent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, bacteria, some study have shown that like 
uh, fecal microbiota transplant study that bacteria exacerbating the disease. Yep. So that's showing there is some link and potential link. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's really interesting how much this story has developed over the past five yeah. years. I mean, 10 years ago, we weren't talking about the gut microbiome at all, really. I mean, there might, there, I'm sure there were people researching it, but it was, you know, very, a very small area of research. Whereas now we're learning, as you said, we're learning so much about all of the different things that the gut microbiome controls um, yeah. and, and has an influence on. So, you know, it is, it's really interesting interesting work so with i guess the the study that that you've been focusing on can you share any of the the findings that you've got so far with that yes well uh, the main result of the study uh, that we published uh, like in last two years and the result that we that unpublished i'll be happy to discuss that so okay. first result that we we found in this uh, project is that a human gut commensal bacteria, like our own bacteria, P. histicola, can suppress disease in preclinical animal model of multiple sclerosis. And treatment with this bacteria modulate or suppress neuroinflammation, demyelination, or it it help it help in reducing the blood brain barrier permeability in the animal model. And most importantly, our findings show that this bacteria suppresses disease as effectively as common disease modifying drug Copaxone or interferon beta that I presented in this virtual meeting. So, and we found that the P. sticola may modulate the systemic immunity and organ specific disease far away from its localization in the gut therefore have a possible role in the treatment strategy for ms like we know that gut brain axis yeah. like bacteria is present in the gut and modulating immune population or working on some other aspect like remyelination in the brain so and finally i i would like to uh, uh, mentioned that uh, result also here that we we also investigated whether P. sticola can alter microbiota composition in disease mice like we are feeding this bacteria to the mice then what is the overall gut microbiota of the mice so we we uh, uh, found that the P. sticola treatment to disease mice shifted gut microbiota closer to the healthy mice microbiota. So with increase in abundance of beneficial bacteria like lactobacillus, mm -hmm. sertella. So it's not only uh, working through producing certain metabolite by bacteria itself, it also helping other bacteria, beneficial bacteria to populate in the gut and do their like beneficial work there. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, uh, I remember when I first read your paper um, before I did the, the summary of it for, for MS Translate. Um, and it was quite mind blowing at the time because we, we had heard, I, I guess I'd read a number of papers talking about differences in the gut microbiome and people that had done a lot of work to show that, yes, there were differences that existed between um, people living with MS and, and healthy controls in terms of what they could see with with abundance or type of bacteria that were there. But to actually take that a step further and say, if we take this bacteria and treat um, in an animal model, and, and we know that it's just an animal model with this with this bacteria, it improves disease to the same yeah. level as, a, as an existing MS therapy. Um, yeah. And part of the way it can do that is by shifting the rest of the gut microbiome. I mean, it, it's hugely exciting, exciting work to take that step and show, you know, this isn't just something that happens. It could be really beneficial. Yeah. So I guess following up on that, um, you know, what are the, the potential outcomes understanding? And, you know, we always stress at MS Translate, we need to keep in mind where the, the stage of the research is. And so understanding that at the moment we're talking through, through animal models, but, you know, thinking down the line a little bit, what are the potential outcomes um, of research like this for, for people living with MS? Yeah, that's very great question. So, 
So one thing I want to mention here that our study has direct translational uh, relevance and avert the possible promise that a human gut commensal bacteria may become a drug of choice for autoimmune disorders such as MS. So our bacteria that we characterize and we have uh, tested it and published in our last two paper like one in cell report and other in the frontier immunology uh, that this bacteria is now in the clinical phase of trial 1b by a company uh, that that evelo biosciences for the treatment of autoimmune disease psoriasis so company was more excited to do this trial in psoriasis because there is no any drug available for psoriasis till date yep. so they have a lot of interest in that disease but we are sure that once uh, and and result so far of that clinical trial is exciting so we are sure that if it will be very successful there its transition into the multiple sclerosis trial will be safe as this bacteria is our own common cell bacteria so we are not uh, going to take from like alien bacteria yeah. so we are we are very sure that this trial uh, this transition from psoriasis disease to multiple sclerosis disease will be safe and swift yeah. so that okay. is that is we are hoping for the ms community well that, i mean that's really exciting we'll certainly follow that with with great interest and i know we've already talked um, about continuing to, to have these discussions because we're really interested in continuing to be able to, to work with you and, and share the results. And I guess, as you say, one of the exciting things about this as a potential therapy um, is that this bacteria already exists naturally in our guts. And so yes. we would assume that a, a treatment like this would have far less side effects than, than other existing treatments that, that we already have. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. 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 So I guess thinking forward, that's sort of talking about the future directions. We've already sort of covered the future directions of this project a, a little bit, thinking that maybe going on to that sort of clinical trial, but other future directions and other projects that you're working on at the moment. Can you share anything with us regarding those? Sure. sure. So actually, so far, what we characterize about this bacteria and in the context of disease, that this bacteria suppress disease, they modulate immune response, like from pro-inflammatory, uh, they suppress the pro-inflammatory immune response and they activate anti-inflammatory immune response. Mm -hmm. But what is the actual mechanism? We don't know. So we are dissecting what is the mechanism of action of this bacteria overall. So we have plan and we are doing that. What is the metabolite changes? once we are feeding this bacteria to the mice so metabolome study we are uh, doing and we are also eluc elucidating whether this bacterial treatment decrease cns pathology by reducing microglia astrocyte activation that is our uh, cns uh, uh, pathogenic cell in this uh, ms context so how this bacteria reducing the activation of astrocytes microglia and how this bacteria involve in promoting remyelination and other cool thing that we already planned and we and uh, my pi dr asutosh mangalam uh, proposed this thing to us like we have to do all these study in artificial gut you know human gut simulator like if we can we can study the effect of bacteria in the gut. So like we will feed this bacteria in the artificial gut and then we will see that how this bacteria, so artificial gut is also kind of our own gut. All the environment will be there, like three layer system, uh, some cell we will put, we will feed the bacteria, we will see how this bacteria is producing something, some metabolite, and that's working on the immune cells and and then there is a cascade of event started and that uh, that reaching to the cns so that 
that we are doing and you might be aware about there is a lot of discussion about diet so so in that artificial uh, intestine we we are thinking that we will feed different different diet we will place different different diet and we will put either single bacteria or group of bacteria or a whole ms microbiota or healthy microbiota and we'll see what is the situation changes in all these feeding so we will do all those things in the in our next uh, step so and regarding other project i i know that we don't have much time to discuss about other project but i'm leading other project uh, that is on the effect of obesity on multiple sclerosis and we heard a lot about the childhood obesity and risk of multiple sclerosis so i i gone through lot of literature survey and i haven't find any mechanistic study all those reported things are belong to like only risk assessment epidemiology that the risk increase when there is multiple uh, when there is a obesity so uh, dr mangalam also published one human gut microbiota uh, ms gut microbiota study and they found that when there is high bmi then there is more active disease so bmi is also associated with the disease uh, exacerbation so what i did in this project that i fed high fat diet to the mice and we induced disease we found there were more severe disease in case of obese mice in comparison to the lean mice and mechanistically what we found that this uh, high fat diet induce more pro inflammatory environment and that lead to transition of our anti inflammatory immune population into the inflammatory immune population and which all together make the disease worse so i am working on that and maybe we will discuss more on that project Look, I, i'm i'm sure we will because i'm sure people will, will, will want to hear about it um you know one thing that that comes across really clearly to me and came across really clearly to me in our initial chat as well um and i always think it's it's such a good sign when you see it is you are you are so clearly very excited about all of the work that you're doing um and really passionate about all of the work that you're doing and um i think that's a a, a really important thing um and also really pleasing to see and i'm sure our community will respond to to that as well um yeah and one thing i will add uh, brett in this yeah. discussion about this high fat and obesity that there is a story already published that we can transfer the uh, obesity phenotype only by transferring the gut bacteria so like if we will take uh, there is a, a study where they have taken the uh, fecal sample or fecal material from the obese uh, individual and they transfer it to the germ free mice and they found that the obesity the, the obesity, obesity transfer to the mice So you can see the power of microbiota. Yes, yeah, I mean it's just it's just growing with every every day, isn't it? In terms of how much we're we're learning about it. Um, yeah. Look, I know that I know that our community um, are hugely interested in this area. We already know that from from things that we've published before, including things that we've published about your work. I'm sure they're going to be even more interested about it, having got to hear from you and and hear all of the exciting work that you're doing and and the results that you've found so far. Yeah. um is there any ways that that people living with ms can help support the work that that you're doing at the moment so we want to first thank the ms community because what we are doing is based on the ms sample like they they are uh, participating in the study and and we are planning more and more rest up on based on the sample so we are grateful to the ms community for their uh for our uh, research material that is sample blood sample swab sample and various kind of sample that we are getting due to their participation and and uh, due to their willingness so we want to 
and we want to request just to continue with providing the research material in the future and that will be a great help for us okay fantastic well look i'm sure that there are going to be a number of people who are going to be uh, exceptionally interested in your work and i'm sure that there will be people if they're in a position um, and in the right part of the world to be able to help support it through participating in your research i'm sure they will um, look it goes without saying again that i'd like to thank you very much um, for your time today and for, for sharing such uh, fantastic work with us um, and on behalf of the MS Translate community, uh, we really do appreciate all of your dedication um, to this area of, of work and we, we really look forward uh, and are excited to hearing more about it in the future. So thank you again for your time. So thank you very much, Brett, for your uh, awesome job of connecting a researcher like us to the MS community because uh, this, was, uh, this was impossible without the person like you. So thank you so much for inviting us and discussing uh, this cool subject in our meeting. Yeah, it's my pleasure and I look forward to doing it many, many more times in the future. I'm sure we will be talking again. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks, Thanks. Rajesh.